Hi guys, this is Heather with Whippoorwill Creations and today I'm going to show you how to make this really cool stocking. I made this pattern. I just took an old sock of my husband's and I placed it in the center on top of my template and then I kind of like drew about two and a half inches all the way around and then I drew up a little pass further so I could have a cute little cuff. This measures seven and a half inches wide by 19 and a half inches this from this to the top. So that's all you got to do for that. You could just use regular paper if you wanted to or cardstock or, or construction paper, whatever you've got on hand. And then I just made sure that my lines were nice and straight so it had a nice, a nice uh, looking stocking. You can also alter this and make it as wide as you want or as big as you want, long, skinny, whatever. And then here's my cuff. I just bought some fleece. You could use fur or flannel or you could make this as rustic or as, as elaborate as you want. I do have an embroidery machine, so I did some embroidery on my stuff. But the cuff is 10 inches by 18 inches. That gives me a lot of leeway. Um, if you wanted to cut it down to size, you could cut it down to probably 15 inches by 10 or maybe a little less if you wanted to and you weren't going to monogram the name on. But this one is 10 by 18. Then I have this little piece here. This is going to be the loop. We're going to cut that piece 2 inches by, oh sorry, backwards, 2 inches by 10 inches. Then you're going to uh, press it in half like this. And then when you get that center seam in there, then you'll press that in there like that. And then you'll fold it up and then we're going to do a little seam. So that captures it so it makes it nice and neat. So there's that. Then you're going to need two pieces of lining with the stocking cut out with your pattern. This is my lining. This is my exterior. I need two pieces of those. Make sure that you have them when you cut these out. Make sure you have them so that they are sandwiched back sides together or right sides together just as long as you have a mirror image. Because if you cut them out both the same facing up you'd have two right sides and no left side. So then you've got two lining, two outer pieces and I cut two pieces of fusible fleece. But you'll see, I didn't cut it the same size. I cut in about a quarter of an inch all the way around because I just didn't want all that bulk in the seam. And then I pressed it to that. So there's that. All right, let's get sewing. Let me uh, get my stuff around here. We're going to sew... The outer piece first, partially. Let me get this, see if I can come over to my sewing machine. Can we see okay? Okay. So I'm going to take these two pieces and I'm going to put them right sides together. And I'm not going to sew all the way around because I want to have, when I get this sewn, I want to be able to have it open like that so that I can sew the cuff on. Did you see that where I pointed? Sew the cuff on after it's sewn here. Okay. So, I got my walking foot on today. And I'm just going to sew a quarter inch. Mm -mm -mm. And I'm going to do a back stitch. Make sure that these are all settled together. Still matching. You can pin these if you want.
Oh, I should point out something. See these black marks on my presser foot? Can you see? I don't know if you can see or not. I took a, a Sharpie marker and then I have a little, I put a little acrylic ruler underneath my needle, set the needle down on the quarter inch, and then I eyeballed it and drew a line, a quarter inch here and a quarter inch here, so that I could have a better visual of when I'm sewing a quarter inch. So we're gonna come down here. This looks like a good spot to stop. So I'm gonna back stitch here, cut my threads. Okay, so now I've got the front and the back sewn together on one side. And now I'm gonna take my cuff and going to put a little center mark here because I've got this cuff embroidered so I want to make sure I get the name centered so I'm just going to put a little pin here now I'm going to fold this so that the right sides are facing out okay get that evened up and just I'm just going to eyeball the O Right about here. So then I'm going to put that right here. And I'm going to secure that. And you'll see I've got just a little bit of an overhang here, which is very important, and I'll explain that in a little bit. But now the rest of this I'm just going to pin down to get it so that it lays nice and smooth. And with this being fleece, that's why I put this walking foot on because it's going to be shifting if I just use a regular, like a J foot, what the normal, that's what the normal letter J foot is for the sewing machine. So we'll just finish pinning this here. Okay, so now we're ready to sew this down, and uh, I'm going to sew this a little less than a quarter inch, because when I sew the lining to it, that will encapsulate, oh, I unthreaded my needle, that's okay, we can fix it really quick. If any of you are wondering, this is a Baby Lock Unity. Um, I felt really blessed. I didn't buy this. My mother-in-law bought the Baby Lock Destiny 2. And she gifted me this one. So I was like... Felt like I died and went to heaven. <laughs> <coughs> this thing is so awesome. But anyways, let's get back to sewing here. All right, I'm gonna do some back stitching here at the beginning. I'm trying to stay within a quarter of an inch. And my stitch length is set at three millimeters because this is a fleece, so it doesn't need to be really tight. In fact, since this is just a basting stitch, we could probably set it up to like four or five. But three's good.
Okay. So now I've got an overhang here and an overhang here. Now I'm going to sandwich this together because we're going to sew this. Together, we're going to sew this closed now. So I'm just going to put a little pin right here just to get it secure. And I'm going to do some just a little tacking right here. All right. When you sew a cuff on something like this, if you were to just sew it straight across like that, when you turn it right side out, the cuff will be the same size as this part. So then this part will pucker because it has no place to go because the cuff has been made the same size. So we have to give it a little bit of an ease. So I'm just going to shift in maybe, oh, where's my marking pen? Right there and right there. So I'm going to shift in about a quarter of an inch. So you're giving yourself a, about a half inch just on the bottom because that's all you need is just right there. So now you can see this is no longer straight. We got just a little bit of an angle here. So now that I've got that done, I'm going to shift this pin here and we're going to finish sewing this quarter inch. Okay. If your edges don't quite match, it's all right. Just take the quarter inch of the most shortest piece and just do a nice smooth seam because you don't want any jerky lines. Like, see how this is right here? I got more extra on top, so I'm going to take a little extra bite out of this. I aimed for this line right here where I knew it was going to match. corner and try to match that line where I started okay let's trim this off scissors here. Cuff is done. Let's turn it right side out. See what it looks like. Oh! I just poked my finger through. I missed a whole bunch right here. So we gotta sew that really quick.
That shifted bad. Mott. I must have been, a, did a bad cutting job when I got the pattern out. That's much better. Now it's a solid piece. Okay, we're going to turn stocking out. And there is the outside. Let's see how nice that lays. Got just enough gap that it's not going to pucker underneath here. So, we're going to sew the lining now, after I flatten the seam. There. Very cool. Okay. Now let's do the lining. Sorry, I'm trying to adjust the phone here. Lining. Right sides together. Put my tools back out of the way. Yeah. Let's see, make sure that it all fits. Did I not show you? I did not show you, and I left it upstairs. What a bonehead. I was going to show you the finished stocking. Now I can't. It's upstairs. Okay, we'll whip through here. Get this. This um, fabric has got like gold sparklies on it. It's hard to shift with your fingers. Probably should have pinned it. But you, if you've watched any of my videos, you know. No, I mean, it takes me just as long to t take the pins out and sew as it does just a finger pin. Normally, better stop. Normally, when I do anything that has a lining, I will leave a gap on the top seam. And then when I turn it right side out, I'll do a top stitch. But in this case, it's a stocking. It's not a purse. It's not a, any clothes or anything like that. So it'll be all right like this. We're going to stop right here. And I want enough space for my hand. So right about here. I'm going to start over. Get this. Lined up here, quarter inch. Finish sewing. What is going on? We can make it work. Fabric will stretch a little bit. Oh, shoot. I didn't do a back stitch here, so I'm going to do a back stitch really quick here. Just to secure that because 
<coughs> Excuse me. When we reach in to turn it, if that wasn't backstitched or reinforced in some way, um, it would tear out the stitches. So here we've got this. Lying is all ready to go. I've got to sew my loop because that's going to go in the construction next. So we will just stick it right here. So about an eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch right along the edge. We just want to secure those that fold. Okay. All right, now, the lining is there. Here is the stocking. Got this, like this. Wanna make sure that the design, well, when it hangs it, it'll be upside down. So, we'll do it this way. There, yes. Yes. Okay, now, uh, right here on the seam, I'm going to, you could put it right in the center, but I'm going to set it off just to the side. So that when the, it hangs, it'll hang from just the back and then the, it'll, it'll be nice. So I'm just going to put a pin here to keep it secure. Tough getting through that, all that fleece. Now, I'm going to stick my arm into the stocking. You could do this either way. You could turn this wrong side out and this right side out. But since it's like this, we're just going to go with it. There's my opening. I'm gonna turn it. So that the toe goes in the right direction. Isn't this fun? <laughs> I love sewing. You get to create things out of raw materials well which is probably why I like to paint and make jewelry all of that all right here we go got the seam here we're going to match up our seam with the seam here My off camera. Okay. I have a really hard time looking through the camera while I'm sewing. So I'm peeking around it. So I'm afraid, oh, I'm always afraid I'm going to go off so that you can't see what I'm doing. All right, now here's the other seam here. So we're going to put that here. We've got that folded over that way. Always make sure your seams match. On this side, it doesn't really matter because the cuff is in the way, but you might as well just be particular. If you get in a good habit of just doing it, you never have to worry about, oh, am I doing it this way or this way? Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to bump the camera. A little pin here, and then we want a pin here. Okay, now let's see if I can get this to fit around the so 
my machine. Ouch. Just barely. Get that under there. Alright. We'll do a back stitch. Uh oh. See if I can get that pulled out. The head came off my pin. This is the loop, so I'm going to do a back stitch across this just to reinforce it. Don't know how heavy the Stuffing is going to be when you guys put your presents in them. So you just want to do a, just a reinforcing stitch there where that loop is going to be. Lise likes to shift. Okay. We're almost done. Oh, we gotta find the hole. Pull the stocking out. Oh, it still broke. Gotta be real careful. Not worried about pushing out these seams yet because it's going to get turned wrong side out again when we tuck it back in. But it just gives us a little tug. It makes these pieces nice. So now I'm going to come back here, starting just about off the edge. I'm in about eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch, and I'm just going to sew that hole shut. We are almost, almost to the end there. To sew right off. I will trim those loose threads. See threads all over here. Where did they come from? Okay. That's it. We just need to tuck the inside piece into let me get my sleeve out of the way so I can get my arm in here. Just smooth that lining around inside so it's nice and flat. And we are done. Is this not cute? Put this back. I'm just uh, working out the seams. There. Then you can hang it. Isn't that cute? I like it. 
and I didn't have to buy a pattern. I just took an old sock, drew around it. So, I hope you liked watching. Stay tuned. I have another idea. I was thinking of um, showing you how to do some wire weaving if anybody's interested. Or maybe uh, a pouring video for painting. Isn't that cute? Anyway. Leave a comment in the comments below asking, you know, if you want to see anything special. But I think what I'm going to do next is show you how to do some wire weaving to do some jewelry. Just a simple coil. I'm going to call it a linear coil. It's not my original design. It's been around for a long time. I'm just going to show you how to do it. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to uh, click subscribe and click the little bell so you can get notifications anytime I uh, upload a new video. And then also, if you want to follow me on Facebook, search for Whippoorwill Creations, just like the name is um, spelled on my YouTube channel. I also just started something on Instagram. Don't know what I'm doing there, but we're working on it. So, until next time, have a great day and happy sewing.